Hold up. Did you know that if you press the pause button right now, come across to the like button and then refresh this video, it's gonna be an entirely different thing. Well, let's be honest, it's gonna be that anyway, but you might as well hit the like button so we can get started with today's video. Today we're talking about the absolute perfect architectural office, and what you can do to create your very own. So let's start this video by shrinking me into a small box, pushing me to one side, and actually talking about a real life time lapse. What's going on guys, my name is David Tomic, I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia, and today we are breaking down the fundamental basics of an architectural office. So first of all, what do you need in this space and how much space do you need? Well, full disclosure, you probably don't need much space at all. You can probably get away with a single desk and a laptop. But if you wanna run a highly successful, extremely professional architectural office, there's a few critical things you're gonna need. Let's start with the client. First of all, there are a number of different meetings that you need to have with your client to interact with. First of all, of course, the introduction meeting, and this can be sorted in a number of different ways. It can be formal, informal, or via a video call. So straight away, you're gonna need a couple of different spaces inside the office to make it functional and work for you. We'll come back to them in a little bit. Next, you wanna impress that client along the entire journey, but you also wanna be able to do your work from that space as well. So breaking these things down fundamentally, you need about three to four different spaces, which can potentially be condensed into two to three spaces. So let's start with the very first one. You meet the client and you wanna sit down, have a cup of coffee with them and understand what their brief is. You're gonna need a functional sit down space. Generally speaking, this is a very informal discussion and it can either be done over a lounge or a dining table. So now you have a couple options. You can have a boardroom table or you can have a lounge suite. Ideally, I see this conversation starting off in a very intimate setting in a lounge suite over a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, just getting to know the potential clients. After that, it moves to a boardroom desk and it actually escalates to when plans are unrolled and talked about. So you're gonna need two spaces here. You need the casual lounge and you're gonna need the boardroom table. Now, as this project evolves, there's gonna be rolls of paper, sheets, products, all sorts of different things. So you're gonna need some space. That boardroom table becomes critical for rolling out plans and discussing. Alternatively, you can still use that lounge suite and put a TV up on the wall, present that way, which is also a great functional way to do it because you're not flipping through hundreds of pieces of paper. However, at a certain point in time during that project, you will need to actually bring out some materials, discuss colors, and talk about the architectural principles in a bit more detail. Which means, ideally, if you're practicing by yourself or you're practicing with a series of other people, you're gonna need a materials library that's very specific, very selective, and perfectly curated to your needs. Now, the materials library takes up a lot of space. And if you don't curate it carefully, it can take up way too much space, be completely unorganized, and a complete mess. So ideally, if you're gonna have a materials and reference library, you keep that as a showpiece and very close to those two spaces where you're interacting with your clients. So when it comes time to actually present a material palette, mood board, whatever you wanna call it, you have the ability to quickly go over and in between these two spaces to continue presenting like it was all planned for. Now for me, this vision is very simple. It is the boardroom table that we discussed with a series of chairs around it to accommodate for a larger group. Most of the time, it's one to two people as your client, but occasionally you do have a round table of consultants that can go up to 10, 12, 15, if not more people around that table. Ideally, you wanna have a boardroom table that can accommodate at least eight people to start off with. From then, you wanna have a casual lounge suite that can accommodate about four to six people. Again, the mixture is constantly moving and changing, so you probably wanna have a couple individual sofas and also a two or a three seater as well available to you. Moving on to the material library and reference library. Personally, I would love to showcase the actual physical hard copy books that make the fundamentals of architecture and have built me as an architect. Then I'd love to showcase the material palette of each individual client as a showpiece of the current projects running. So for one example, what you could do is you could have a long elongated series of drawers, all extremely small and thin because materials are typically quite small slabs, swatches or anything in between. So you don't actually need deep drawers unless you're going to build some larger profile display sets. These could come in the form of claddings, stone materials, wall panelings, floor tiles, etc. that you just need that large format to actually be able to present what it really looks like. 
A good example that comes to mind is a kitchen bench top, especially one that's marble or granite, even limestone. They are continuously changing in pattern and a small little sample about this big just doesn't cut it when you're trying to actually express the architectural detail to the client. So large format tiles here are awesome and potentially you could have a bank of drawers at the bottom specifically catered for this. I'd foresee anywhere from about eight to 10 banks of different drawers, each categorized for different products and samples. We'll be talking for all sorts of different things from floor coverings, timber, carpet, vinyl, wall coverings, colors, skirtings, even all the way up to roof profiles, sheeting styles, and even gutters if you wanted to really go into depth. It is really ideal that you can have all of these things on hand, keep the material library updated and fresh with your reps as they come in, because that's gonna give you a lot more ability to design better and in the current market. So as materials change, as palettes change, you already have that updated in your library ready to go. Now this material library is a series of cabinetry, which allows you to basically piggyback onto that cabinetry and create a small little kitchenette in the office. You're obviously gonna need a microwave, little fridge, some sort of coffee machine, tea maker, kettles, things like that, just to be able to accommodate the clients that walk into your door. So if you have the ability to integrate a small kitchen into the office space, go for it. Ideally, we're probably looking about that 50 to 60 square meter mark, which is a good comfortable size for I would say a two to three to four person practice. At about that size, you start to get a little bit claustrophobic, especially with all those spaces going on. So I'd say it's about 60 square meters for four people and then add a little bit of square meterage as more staff come on board. Now we've covered the client interaction and consultation, but we haven't actually talked about the additional utilities that you're gonna need. So yes, you're gonna need some plumbing fixtures and fittings, but you're also gonna need some sort of concealed printers hidden away in that small office space. Architectural printers, especially large A1 or A0 printers, are incredibly ugly, but they've gotten a lot more slimline and compact. So for example, you can hide an A1 printer in a set of drawers or in a cupboard quite seamlessly and quite easily if you're clever about it and think about it from day one. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to put it smack bang on top of the bench and it's just gonna look completely out of place. A small little comms room cupboard is gonna be extremely versatile, just so you can integrate all your IT needs and your phone lines. It doesn't have to take up too much space. 600 by 600 is probably more than enough, depends on your requirement. Now we've got the back wall covered, we've got the interaction with the clients covered, but what happens when you need to go to the bathroom? We definitely need some sort of bathroom on site to be able to facilitate this. You can't direct clients to just hold it, you can't direct people to go somewhere else, you really want them to have a premium experience when they go to your bathroom. A few of my clients have previously said in the past, this is what makes or breaks a venue. If your bathrooms are extremely poor quality, then the venue itself is just tarnished. No matter how good the venue is, people will come in, say lovely things, and then walk back into the bathroom and go, hmm, that was just a miss. So the bathrooms always need to be clean, always need to be pristine, and they need to be done to a very, very high level. Okay, so now maybe it's time to actually focus on the architect and the architects in the office. They need a little bit of space, some desks, some chairs to actually do their work. Ideally, you wanna be running a desktop. Personally, I find one screen more than enough, but two screens is the industry standard. So two screens per staff member requires about 1.5 meters of desk space, plus papers, plus drawers, etc. So if you can allocate about 2.5 by one square meters per desk per staff member, you should have more than enough room to actually integrate the working and functional spaces into this. Nowadays, most architectural practices place their staff on show. These are the people and the heroes behind the architectural practice that make things happen. Without a good team and without the efforts behind every single person, then things just don't happen. So that's why architectural practices are showcasing their workspaces just like they used to do in the past where there was warehouses full of people floating in thin air, drawing over large scale paper. It's a lot more condensed now, obviously, but we are still on display. So you wanna make this space as nice and elegant and integrated as you possibly can. To be able to create this space today, I've used ArchiCAD 26 and the latest Twin Motion 2023.1, which has come out just a couple of days ago. The whole UI has changed immensely and it is basically like learning a whole new software once again, but so far the system is getting better every single week. There is one little cheeky thing that I did in this video here, which was actually implement a HDR map from Google Street View. 
Now, if you wanna do the same thing, I'll drop the links down below. Just simply download the Street Viewer to your computer. All you need to do then is copy the URL into the Street Viewer, export it as a JPEG, and then convert it to a HDR through any form of converter. Both the websites, no affiliation, I just thought it was a really cool feature so you could import any HDRI sky, any environment directly into your project and make it look as realistic as possible. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and don't forget about the like button. If you have any comments, questions or concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comments down below. I will try to answer as many as physically possible. Otherwise, you can join us on our Discord group. It's 100% free. The link is in the description. Like I said, that is all from me. So I'll see you next Monday.